This ebook is brought to you by Agenvard 1998. Biography of Melanie Klein. Melanie Klein, the woman who developed a theory that emphasized the nurturing and loving relationship between parent and child, had neither a nurturant nor a loving relationship to her own daughter Melita. The rift between mother and daughter began early. Melita was the oldest of three children born to parents who did not particularly like one another. When Melita was 15, her parents separated, and Melita blamed her mother for the separation and for the divorce that followed. As Melita matured, her relationship with her mother became more acrimonious. After Melita received a medical degree, underwent a personal analysis, and presented scholarly papers to the British Psychoanalytical Society. She was officially a member of that society, professionally equal to her mother. Her analyst, Edward Glover, was a bitter rival of Melanie Klein. Glover, who encouraged Melita's independence, was at least indirectly responsible for Melita's virulent attacks on her mother. The animosity between mother and daughter became even more intense when Melita married Walter Schmidberg, another analyst who strongly opposed Klein and who openly supported Anna Freud. Klein's most bitter rival. Despite being a full member of the British Psychoanalytical Society, Melita Schmidberg felt that her mother saw her as an appendage, not a colleague. In a strongly worded letter to her mother in the summer of 1934, Melita wrote, I hope you will also allow me to give you some advice. I am very different from you. I already told you years ago that nothing causes a worse reaction in me than trying to force feelings into me it is the surest way to kill all feelings. I am now grown up and must be independent. I have my own life, my husband. Melita went on to say that she would no longer relate to her mother in the neurotic manner of her younger years. She now had a shared profession with her mother and insisted that she be treated as an equal. The story of Melanie Klein and her daughter takes on a new perspective in light of the emphasis that object relations theory places on the importance of the mother-child relationship. Overview of Object Relations Theory The object relations theory of Melanie Klein was built on careful observations of young children. In contrast to Freud, who emphasized the first four to six years of life, Klein stressed the importance of the first four to six months after birth. She insisted that the infant's drives, hunger, sex, and so forth, are directed to an object a breast, a penis, a vagina, and so on. According to Klein, the child's relation to the breast is fundamental and serves as a prototype for later relations to whole objects, such as mother and father. The very early tendency of infants to relate to partial objects gives their experiences an unrealistic or fantasy-like quality that affects all later interpersonal relations. Thus, Klein's ideas tend to shift the focus of psychoanalytic theory from organically based stages of development to the role of early fantasy in the formation of interpersonal relationships. In addition to Klein, other theorists have speculated on the importance of a child's early experiences with the mother. Margaret Mahler believed that children's sense of identity rests on a three-step relationship with their mother. First, infants have basic needs cared for by their mother, Next, they develop a safe symbiotic relationship with an all-powerful mother, and finally, they emerge from their mother's protective circle and establish their separate individuality. Heinz Koha theorized that children develop a sense of self during early infancy when parents and others treat them as if they had an individualized sense of identity. John Bowlby investigated infants' attachment to their mother as well as the negative consequences of being separated from their mother. Mary Ainsworth and her colleagues developed a technique for measuring the type of attachment style an infant develops toward its caregiver. Biography of Melanie Klein Melanie Reises Klein was born March 30, 1882, in Vienna, Austria. The youngest of four children born to Dr. Morais Reises and his second wife, Libusa Deutsch Reises, Klein believed that her birth was unplanned a belief that led to feelings of being rejected by her parents. She felt especially distant to her father, who favored his oldest daughter Emily. By the time Melanie was born, her father had long since rebelled against his early Orthodox Jewish training and had ceased to practice any religion. As a consequence, Klein grew up in a family that was neither pro-religious nor anti-religious. 
During her childhood Klein observed both parents working at jobs they did not enjoy. Her father was a physician who struggled to make a living in medicine and eventually was relegated to working as a dental assistant. Her mother ran a shop selling plants and reptiles, a difficult, humiliating, and fearful job for someone who abhorred snakes. Despite her father's meager income as a doctor, Klein aspired to become a physician. Klein's early relationships were either unhealthy or ended in tragedy. She felt neglected by her elderly father, whom she saw as cold and distant, and although she loved and idolized her mother, she felt suffocated by her. Klein had a special fondness for her older sister Sydney, who was four years older and who taught Melanie arithmetic and reading. Unfortunately, when Melanie was four years old, Sydney died. In later years, Klein confessed that she never got over grieving for Sydney. After her sister's death, Klein became deeply attached to her only brother Emmanuel, who was nearly five years older and who became her close confidant. She idolized her brother, and this infatuation may have contributed to her later difficulties in relating to men. Like Sydney earlier, Emmanuel tutored Melanie, and his excellent instructions helped her pass the entrance examinations of a reputable preparatory school. When Klein was 18, her father died, but a greater tragedy occurred two years later when her beloved brother Emmanuel died. Emmanuel's death left Klein devastated. While still in mourning over her brother's death, she married Arthur Klein, an engineer who had been Emmanuel's close friend. Melanie believed that her marriage at age 21 prevented her from becoming a physician, and for the rest of her life, she regretted that she had not reached that goal. Unfortunately, Klein did not have a happy marriage, she dreaded sex and abhorred pregnancy. Nevertheless, her marriage to Arthur produced three children, Melita, born in 1904, Hans, born in 1907, and Eric, born in 1914. In 1909, the Kleins moved to Budapest, where Arthur had been transferred. There, Klein met Sandor Ferenczi, a member of Freud's inner circle and the person who introduced her into the world of psychoanalysis. When her mother died in 1914, Klein became depressed and entered analysis with Ferenczi, an experience that served as a turning point in her life. That same year she read Freud's On Dreams and realized immediately that was what I was aiming at, at least during those years when I was so very keen to find out what would satisfy me intellectually and emotionally. At about the same time that she discovered Freud, her youngest child, Eric, was born. Klein was deeply taken by psychoanalysis and trained her son according to Freudian principles. As part of this training, she began to psychoanalyze Eric from the time he was very young. In addition, she also attempted to analyze Melita and Hans, both of whom eventually went to other analysts. Melita, who became a psychoanalyst, was malized by Karen Horney as well as by others. An interesting parallel between Horney and Klein is that Klein later analyzed Horney's two youngest daughters when they were 12 and 9 years old. Homie's oldest daughter was 14 and refused to be analyzed. Unlike Melita's voluntary analysis by Horney, the two Homie children were compelled to attend analytic sessions, not for treatment of any neurotic disorder but as a preventive measure. Klein separated from her husband in 1919 but did not obtain a divorce for several years. After the separation, she established a psychoanalytic practice in Berlin and made her first contributions to the psychoanalytic literature with a paper dealing with her analysis of Eric, who was not identified as her son until long after Klein's death. Not completely satisfied with her own analysis by Ferenczi, she ended the relationship and began an analysis with Carl Abraham, another member of Freud's inner circle. After only 14 months, however, Klein experienced another tragedy when Abraham died. At this point of her life, Klein decided to begin a self-analysis, one that continued for the remainder of her life. Before 1919, psychoanalysts, including Freud, based their theories of child development on their therapeutic work with adults. Freud's only case study of a child was little Hans, a boy whom he saw as a patient only once. Melanie Klein changed that situation by psychoanalyzing children directly. 
her work with very young children, including her own, convinced her that children internalize both positive and negative feelings toward their mother and that they develop a superego much earlier than Freud had believed. Her slight divergence from standard psychoanalytic theory brought much criticism from her colleagues in Berlin, causing her to feel increasingly uncomfortable in that city. Then, in 1926, Ernest Jones invited her to London to analyze his children and to deliver a series of lectures on child analysis. These lectures later resulted in her first book, The Psychoanalysis of Children. In 1927, she took up permanent residency in England, remaining there until her death on September 22, 1960. On the day of her memorial service, her daughter Melita delivered a final posthumous insult by giving a professional lecture wearing flamboyant red boots, which scandalized many in her audience. Klein's years in London were marked by division and controversy. Although she continued to regard herself as a Freudian, neither Freud nor his daughter Anna accepted her emphasis on the importance of very early childhood or her analytic technique with children. Her differences with Anna Freud began while the Freuds were still living in Vienna, but they climaxed after Anna moved with her father and mother to London in 1938. Before the arrival of Anna Freud, the English school of psychoanalysis was steadily becoming the Kleonian school. And Klein's battles were limited mostly to those with her daughter Melita, and these battles were both fierce and personal. In 1934, Klein's older son, Hans, was killed in a fall. Melita, who had recently moved to London with her psychoanalyst husband Walter Schmidberg, maintained that her brother had committed suicide, and she blamed her mother for his death. During that same year, Melita began an analysis with Edward Glover, one of Klein's rivals in the British society. Klein and her daughter then became even more personally estranged and professionally antagonistic, and Melita maintained her animosity even after her mother's death. Although Melita Schmidberg was not a supporter of Anna Freud, her persistent antagonism toward Klein increased the difficulties of Klein's struggle with Anna Freud, who never recognized the possibility of analyzing young children. The friction between Klein and Anna Freud never abetted, with each side claiming to be more Freudian than the other. Finally, in 1946 the British Society accepted three training procedures the traditional one of Melanie Klein, the one advocated by Anna Freud, and a middle group that accepted neither training school but was more eclectic in its approach. By such a division, the British Society remained intact, albeit with an uneasy alliance. <laughs>